This week, I was reading an article that a woman named Debbie Thomas writes every week on a website called Journey with Jesus. I've mentioned her before, but I want to just make sure I cite my sources here. She was talking about how what she was never told about the Christmas story, what she was never told about Mary, that Mary, down through the years, has somehow become this meek and mild girl with little to say. You re may remember that last week, Tuhina talked about this thing called the RLC, the Revised Common Lectionary, which is a fancy way to, of talking about the readings that are assigned for each week of the church year. And lots and lots of churches around the world use these same lessons every week. It was created in 1994, but there were cycles of reading before that time too. That's why they call it Revised Common Lectionary because before there was just the Common Lectionary. And there are about 20 denominations that follow those readings. Most of, the most of the time, we also follow those readings, or at least one of them, because each week there is a assigned reading from the Old Testament or Hebrew Bible, and one from the Psalms, and one from the New Testament letters, the stuff that's after the Gospels, and then one from Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. And that's usually the one that we do, um, because we just read whatever is going to be preached on. The assigned readings run on a three-year cycle, so it ends up covering a lot of ground in the Bible, but not all the ground. You might remember Tuhina talking about how someone somewhere made a decision about what would regularly be heard in churches in the biblical readings and what would not, what ends up on the cutting room floor. Well, it turns out we get a good example of that this week because we get the story of the angel visiting Mary and telling her what is going to happen and Mary responding, how can this be? And then listening to the response and then saying, here I am, let it be with me according to your will. And that's where the story ends for today. But that is not the end of Mary's story. It fits nicely to end there if you want Mary to remain in the background, the silent and perplexed girl who ponders things in her heart. But the reality is that Mary is the woman in the New Testament who has been given the most words to say of any other woman. And the words that she said echoed the words of her ancestors and also became words of hope for people down through the years who struggled in oppression. She sings this song that we call the Magnificat, and many people have tried to silence those words. They have even been banned from certain places because they scare people. You can't run around singing that God will bring down the powerful from their thrones and scatter the proud without being someone who is noticed, without being questioned, without someone trying to silence you. And so they did try to silence her by painting a picture of her that looks like she was just a very quiet, inconsequential girl from Nazareth and in the Revised Common Lectionary, leaving out her song. And actually, it seems that the RLC did give us these words, the words that she sang, and I think they would have been read last week instead of a psalm if we were reading psalms. Um, so for people who do the psalms, they would have heard those words because it's a psalm, which is what the word psalm means. But when you read them, it doesn't say who is singing them because it divorces it from her story. So it could just be another song written by anyone. Could be King David, who many people think wrote most of the, um, or all of the psalms in, in the book of Psalms. In my opinion, he probably didn't, but that's a lesson for another day. Mary's words lose their power when they are out of context. But Mary did say these words. She did make these claims about God, and she sang them with joy and hope. After our reading for today ends, she goes up to the hill country to visit Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth meets her, she experiences her own quickening as the one in her belly leaps in her womb at their meeting. And Elizabeth greets her with welcoming and I'm sure relieving words. Blessed are you among women. And then Mary bursts into song, and here are her words. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. 
He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. So back to Debbie Thomas and her thoughts on Mary, that she didn't get to learn those words when she was younger. She ends this essay with a challenge. She says, the Magnificat is a song of too much hope. Of course it is, because too much hope is precisely what we're called to cultivate on this fourth and final Sunday in Advent. Can you do it? Can you find your voice and share it with a world more desperately in need than now than ever? What does your Magnificat sound like this year? How is God magnified through your unique perspective and vision? What stories of divine favor do you have to tell? What glorious reversals do you see heading our way? What words will you choose to describe the good news of the Messiah that you carry? Don't wait, sing it, sing it now. And so that's what I'll do with the rest of this message time. So this is a remix of Mary's song. It is not my own song. I'm writing from Mary's perspective, from um, bringing in parts of Luke 1 and 2. My soul, my very being stands up and reflects you, the God of my ancestors, the God of my people, the God who led my people out of slavery, the God who saves the God who is always about liberation. My soul not only reflects you, but magnifies you. This news you are bringing me, this news you are bringing me, me, who is young, who is brown, who is female, who is from Nazareth, where nothing ever good comes from, they say, who is not married, who is poor. I will magnify you, through me, through my soul, you, God, will come into clearer focus for us. You will be seen in ways we have never been able to see you before. You, God, will be made known, and I find joy in that. Joy. My insides are bubbling up to nearly bursting. Even though this is scary, even though I am not sure why you picked me, even though I'm not sure what to do, where to go, who to tell, who to trust, who will believe me, even though I should be terrified, even though I am terrified, even though I still wonder how can this be, this message that is life-changing, this message that will change all of our plans, this message from an angel that changes the course of history, even so, I am filled with joy because you have looked at me and you have loved me. This brown skin, this backwater town, this family, this. You have called me good. You have found me worthy. You have said you are with me. And not in a God is with you, nice thing to say kind of way. I got clarity on that, that this messenger. They said, you are with me, with me, in me, a part of me growing in me despite where I come from, despite who I am, despite who I am not, you have looked with love on me and blessed me. And now you are with me and you are holy and you are growing inside of me. God is with you. Our words that mean something brand new today. From now on, I will be known I will be known as the one who carried you, infinite you, putting on flesh, you who are coming into the world through me, through this body, through this flesh into flesh. You, God, have always been working, creating, inspiring, liberating. You have been with us, scattering people who are proud, just when they think they rule the world, you remind them that you are God and no one else. You are God and not them. You are God and not human rulers. You are God and not corporations. You are God and not tech companies. 
You are God and not industries. You are God and not lobbyists. You are God and not countries or rulers of countries. You are God and not viruses. You are God and not police. You are God and not any one group of people, not any race, not any gender, not any one way of living, not anyone who thinks they have it all figured out. You are God. You bring down those in power and you lift up those who are not. You lift up people who have no money to spend. You lift up people who have no power to yield. You lift up people who struggle to survive day to day. You lift up people barely living paycheck to paycheck. You lift up people who have no home. You lift up people who are abused by authority figures. You lift up people who have knees on their necks. You fill people who are hungry and not with scraps, not with the leftovers, not from dumpster diving, not from day old bread. You fill the hungry with good things, good things. And even though I don't know what it's going to look like, I don't know what is going to happen. I don't know what people are going to say. I don't know how we are going to live our lives or what shape they will take or when people will know who you are or when you will know who you are or what will happen when they find out even though your life will be hard, little one, if people will have great expectations of you and people will also question your authority. People will wonder who you think you are doing these things when you come from Nazareth, when you come from the people you come from, when you come from a woman like me. People will doubt you and people will need you and that need will have no end. People will reach out to you and gather around you and find hope in you and follow you waiting for the revolution to begin. And it will be hard to watch. It will be hard knowing I have been told that a sword will pierce my own soul too. Even though these things will happen, I am not afraid. I am filled with joy. I am filled with peace. I am filled with love for a baby that will be born who contains the hopes and the fears of all the years. I am ready. Let it be with me according to your will. Amen.